Shalom Israel, Captain OC. I'll send it by. All right, today is 15 minutes with the captains. Today we are going to go into the Assyrian captivity. Today is titled The Assyrian Assault. All right, so bear with us as we go through these captivities. We're going to try to cover each of the seven major captivities briefly. So when you do your own studies, you have something to base it upon. All right, so why is this important to know our history, to know the captivity? Let's start at Romans chapter 15 and verse 4. The book of Romans, chapter 15, verse 4. Uh -huh. For whatsoever things were written aforetime uh -huh. were written for our learning. Well, what? Were written for our learning. So we must learn from our forefathers in the example that they set. Now, as I mentioned, we're going to go into the Assyrian captivity. Now, some things that are important for you to understand when you talk about the Assyrian captivity, it is predominantly based upon uh, the northern kingdom of Israel being taken captive. Also, before you can even get into that aspect of it, you must understand what happened between the two kingdoms. So let's start Nehemiah chapter 13, and let's read verse 23, and then we're going to jump to 26. The book of Nehemiah chapter 20, 15, I'm sorry, Nehemiah chapter 13, uh -huh. verse 23. In those days also saw I Jews that had married wives of Ashdod, uh -huh. of Amnon, and of Moab. Verse 26, uh -huh. did not Solomon, king of Israel, sin by these things? Did not what? Did not Solomon, king of Israel, sin by these things? Read. Yet among many nations was there no king like him. Read. Who was beloved of his God, uh -huh. and God made him king over all Israel. Now that's the key part of this whole thing. God made him what? God made him king over all Israel. Over all Israel. So Solomon was the last king to reign over a united kingdom. Both the southern kingdom and northern kingdom together as one. What happened? Why did they split? Now, let's go to 1 Kings chapter 11 and verse 34. So now we understand there was two kingdoms. There was the southern and northern kingdom. But Solomon reigned over them both. What happened? The book of 1 Kings chapter 11 verse 34. Uh -huh. How be it? I will not take the whole kingdom out of his hand, uh -huh. but I will make him prince all the days of his life. Uh -huh. For David, my servant's sake, Read. whom I chose. Because he kept my commandments and my statutes, uh -huh. but I will take the kingdom out of his son's hand, uh -huh. and I will give it unto thee, even ten tribes. So, the Most High decided because of Solomon's sin, he was going to split the kingdom into two. It was going to be divided. Ten tribes would be what's considered the northern kingdom, and then one tribe, which ended up being three, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, would become the southern kingdom. All right, from there, let's go to First Kings. Chapter 12 and verse 7. So, the understand, Rehoboam was given the southern kingdom, and Jeroboam was given the northern kingdom. What happened that caused that split outside of Solomon's sin? Read that. First Kings chapter 12, verse 7. Uh -huh. And they spake unto him, saying, If thou will be a servant unto this people this day, uh -huh. and will serve them, and answer them, and speak good words to them, then they will be thy servants forever. Read. But he forsook the counsel of the old men, uh -huh. which they had given him. And consulted with the young men that were grown up with him, which stood before him. So, what happened? Rehoboam received counsel from the older men to lighten the load that was on the nation of Israel from his father Solomon from building the temple. Did he take the counsel? No. So, the northern kingdom was already fed up, and this was the last straw. Jump down to verse 16. Verse 16. So when all Israel saw that the king hearkened not unto them, uh -huh. the people answered the king, saying, what portion have we in David? What portion have we in David? Mean amongst amongst Judah. Read. Neither have we inheritance in the son of Jesse. To your tents, O Israel. To what? To your tents, O Israel. Uh -huh. Now see to thine own house, David. So Israel departed unto their so tents. So Israel departed to their tents. All right. They split up. This is the beginning of the split. From there, go jump down to 1 Kings. Chapter 12 and verse 27. So let's look at the beginning of the northern kingdom of Israel. Like I said, we're doing this very briefly. When you go back, read this whole chapter and you get a little bit better understanding. Let's read the beginning of the northern kingdom of Israel. Read that. Verse 27. Mm -hmm. If this people go up to do sacrifice in the house of the Lord at Jerusalem, then shall the heart of this people turn again unto the Lord, uh -huh. even unto Rehoboam, king of Judah. Read. And they shall kill me. And go again to Rehoboam, king of Judah. So what happened? Jeroboam knew that if the people went back up to Jerusalem to sacrifice, they would, they would get back in line and they would become a nation again. So what did he do? Read. Verse 28. Whereupon the king took counsel and made two calves of gold. Uh -huh. 
and said unto them, it is too much for you to go up to Jerusalem. Uh -huh. Behold, thy gods, O Israel, Read. which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And he set the one in Bethel, and the other put he in Dan. So he put two false idols in the northern kingdom's land, one in Bethel and one in Dan. He said, right. these will be your gods. This is where you will come to worship. No longer will we go to Jerusalem. Read. Verse 30. And this thing became a sin, for the people went to worship before the one even unto Dan. Read. And he's made an house of high places and made priests of the lowest of the people, uh -huh. which were not of the sons of Levi. So what happened, they set up their own basically religion. They, they started to worship their own idols. This was going on who amongst who? The northern kingdom of Israel. That's why they went first. Right. When you read the history, there were 19 kings of the northern kingdom. You know how many of them were righteous? Zero. That's why God did away with them first. From there, let's go to, uh, what did I got? Sirach 47 and verse 23. So we're going to see what spirit did, did this idolatry stir amongst the Most High God. Read that. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 47, verse 23. Uh -huh. Thus rested Solomon with his fathers, and of his seed he left behind him Rehoboam. Read. Even the foolishness of the people. Right, the foolishness of the people, because he didn't take the counsel. Read. And one that had no understanding, uh -huh. who turned away the people through his counsel. Read. There was also Jeroboam. That's who we just read about. Who put it the two golden calves. Read. The son of Nebat, who caused Israel to sin. Read. And showed Ephraim the way of sin. Read. And their sins were multiplied exceedingly. And they were driven out of the land. Uh-huh. For they sought out all wickedness till the vengeance came upon them. Till the vengeance came upon them. So now we're going to get into it. So now we see the cause and effect. Israel particularly Ephraim, right. went into idolatry. The Most High said he was going to send vengeance upon them for that. Let's go to the book of Hosea. I mean, Amos chapter 6 and verse 14. Amos chapter 6 and verse 14. So we see Ephraim primarily went into idolatry. All right, give me Amos 6 and 14. The book of Amos chapter 6 verse 14. Mm -hmm. But behold, I will raise up against you a nation. But what? Behold, I will raise up against you a nation. Because of their sins, he said, I'm going to raise up a nation. Read. O house of Israel, uh -huh. said the Lord God of hosts, and they shall afflict you uh -huh. from the entering in of Hamath unto the river of the wilderness. So the Most High God said, because of your idolatry, I'm going to raise up a nation to afflict you. What nation was that? Let's go to the book of Isaiah chapter 10 and verse 5. So now you're seeing, you're getting a little understanding of what happened. Israel went into sin. The Most High said, you know what? I'm going to send a nation against you. Right. Sounds very familiar, huh? Yes. Read. Isaiah chapter 10, verse 5. Uh-huh. O Assyrian. Oh what? O Assyrian. Read. The rod of mine anger. The what? The rod of mine anger. Because of his anger with us, he sent the nation of Assyria against us. Read. And the staff in their hand is mine indignation. Uh-huh. I will send him against an hypocritical nation. You see that? He said he's going to send Assyria against us. And he said Assyria would be the rod of his anger. Now, from there, go to 2 Kings chapter 15 and verse 19. Let's see. So Israel was going into the midst of idolatry. And what happened? The Mosai would bring nations against us. Right. So during this whole time period, northern kingdom or southern kingdom, we never would come to God for our problems. Let me give you an example. Read it. The book of 2 Kings, chapter 15, verse 19. Uh -huh. And Paul, the king of Assyria, came against the land. Mm -hmm. And Menahem gave Paul a thousand talents of silver. So Paul came against the land of Israel. Meaning what? He came to take it over. He came for war. Read. That his hand might be with him. To confirm the kingdom in his hand. Uh -huh. And Menahem exacted the money of Israel. Uh -huh. Even of all the mighty men of wealth. Uh -huh. Of each man 50 shekels of silver. To give to the king of Assyria. So the king of Assyria turned back. And stayed not there in the land. So what are we seeing right here? They came to fight. And he said you know what? We'll give you this money. Hmm. He tried to pay them off. Instead of saying you know what? You coming to fight me? I'm going to call on my God and defend it. He said no. Right. We'll, we'll make an agreement. I'll pay you such and such. Have many shekels of gold, and you'll be fine. Let's see what God says about that. Go to uh, Hosea chapter 5 and verse 13. So at this point, Israel became a vassal nation to who? Assyria. We were servants. We were in a tributary state. Read that. 
Hosea, Hosea 5 and chapter 13. 5, verse 13. Uh-huh. When Ephraim saw his sickness uh-huh. and Judah saw his wound, Read. then went Ephraim to the Assyrian. Then went what? Then went Ephraim to the Assyrian. Then went Ephraim to the Assyrian. Why? Because they we went and paid pool money to heal us not being in captivity. Read it again. When Ephraim saw his sickness and Judah saw his wound, uh-huh. then went Ephraim to the Assyrian Read. and sent to King Jareb. Yet could he not heal you, mm-hmm. nor cure you of your wounds. Right, but they couldn't stop what was coming from the Most High God. You paying them off couldn't stop. Why? Because you were in the midst of sin. They could not hit a wound. What was the wound? The sins that we were in. Give me that in Job chapter 13 and verse 4. This is what God calls the Assyrians. Because we tried to use them as a tool to fix the, the sickness amongst us. Read that. The book of Job, chapter 13, verse 4. Uh-huh. But ye are forgers of lies. Uh-huh. Ye are all physicians of no value. Right. Us going to the Assyrians, us going to the Egyptians, it is of no value. We had to turn our face, who? Back to our God. So, Pool came to the land. Jump down to 2 Kings, chapter 15, and verse 29. Pool is another name for who? tiglath Pileser. All right? We're going to read about what happened. So, when you're reading through this history, understand... This, um, the Assyrians didn't just take us out of the land at one time. They came many times and took us out of the land in waves, the same way the Babylonians did. Read that, 2 Kings 15. 2 Kings chapter 15, verse 9. 15, 29, 29. 15, verse 29. Uh-huh. In the days of Pekah, king of Israel, came tiglath Pileser, uh-huh. king of Assyria, and took Ajan, and abeth Makkah, uh-huh. and Joanah, and Kadesh, uh-huh. and Hazar, and Gilead, and Galilee. All the land of Naphtali and carried them captive to Assyria. And did what? And carried them captive to Assyria. And carried them captive into Assyria. So understand, us being taken from a land that's not ours and being placed in another land Mm -hmm. is nothing new. Us being here in America is, that is the biggest, um, what's the sign that we are the Israelites. This is something that's been going on Time and time and time again. But if you don't read your history, if you don't apply Romans 15 and 4, you don't understand that. Right. So they were taken into Assyria. Give me that in Hosea chapter 9 and verse 3. I'm going to show you something else about uh, Assyria and the word Egypt. Read that. Hosea chapter 9 verse 3. Uh-huh. They shall not dwell in the Lord's land. They shall what? They shall not dwell in the Lord's land. We were not going to dwell in the Lord's land. Read. But Ephraim shall return to Egypt. Hold on. But Ephraim what? But Ephraim shall return to Egypt. What is this showing you? Egypt means what? Bondage. We say it all the time. Right. Bondage is not just in Egypt. It's not just in Babylon. It's not just in Greece. It's wherever you are in a servitude. Right now, we're in Egypt. Right. right. We are in Egypt. Why? Because we are slaves. Read that again. They shall not dwell in the Lord's land, Uh but Ephraim shall return to Egypt, Uh and they shall eat unclean things in Assyria. Where? In Assyria. Showing you Egypt is not the physical location. Right. It's a place of bondage. Go to Tobit chapter 1 and verse 10. Let's get that prophecy coming to pass. It says, we're going to eat unclean things where? In Assyria. Right. Read that. Tobit chapter 1 verse 10. Start at verse 1. I'm sorry. Verse 1. The book of the words of Tobit, uh-huh. son of Tobiel, and son of Aniel, uh-huh. the son of Adul, Read. the son of Gabiel, uh-huh. of the seed of Asael, of the tribe of Naphtali, Read. who in time, who in the time of Anamaneser, king of the Assyrians, was led captive of Thisbe, uh-huh. which is at the right hand of that city, which is called properly Naphtali in Galilee above Asher. So now we're reading about the history of when they were taken out of land and placed in Assyria. Jump down to verse 10. Verse 10. And when we were carried away captives to Nineveh, Nineveh, read, all my brethren and those that were of my kindred uh-huh. did eat of the bread of the Gentiles. Did what? Did eat of the bread of of the Gentiles. So did what Hosea say come to pass? Absolutely. Now, let's jump back to uh, Hosea chapter, no, 2 Kings 17 and verse 1. So what happened? The first wave of Israelites were taken into Assyria. Alright? So when you read about Jonah going to Nineveh, why did he go there? Because the Israelites were scattered there. Right. It's nothing new. Why did Paul go to all these different lo- locations? Because that's where the Israelites were scattered. The things written aforetime were written for your learning. Read that again. 
the book of second kings yep. chapter 17 verse 1 uh-huh. in the 12th year of ahaz king of judah began hoshea the son of allah to reign in samaria read over israel nine years uh-huh. and he did that which was evil in the sight of the lord read but not as the kings of israel that were before him read Against him came up Shalmaneser, king of Assyria, uh-huh. and Hosea became his servant and gave him presents. So we remain in that vassal stage. We were servants to Assyria. Read. And the king of Assyria found conspiracy in Hosea, uh-huh. for he had sent messengers to so king of Egypt. He did Egypt, what? For he sent messengers to so king of Egypt. So what were we doing? Even while we knew we were in a, a slavery state. We still went and what ran to Egypt instead of bowing our neck to the Assyrians as we were supposed to. What happened because of that? Go to Hosea. No, oh, no, finish that. I'm sorry. Right. And brought no present to the king of Assyria uh-huh. as he had done year by year. Read. Therefore, the king of Assyria shut him up and bound him in prison. And bound him in prison. Hosea 7:11. When you read the book of Hosea, understand this book was written primarily to what? To the northern kingdom of Israel. And when you read throughout it, it tells you they were in heavy, heavy idolatry. Right. Read that. Hosea 7, 11. The book of Hosea, chapter 7, verse 11. Uh-huh. Ephraim also is like a silly dove. Is what? Is like a silly dove. Ephraim is like a silly dove. But why? Without heart. Uh-huh. They call to Egypt. They do what? They call to Egypt. When did they call to Egypt? When he ran to who? So king of Egypt. Right. Read. They go to Assyria. And because you called on the Egyptians, now I'm going to send you to where? Assyria. That history, this, the, the, the Bible is a beautiful book. Get love this thing. From there, let's go back to 2 Kings chapter 17. Let's jump down to verse 22. So, now we're, reading, we're going to read about the uh, second wave of us being taken out. The book of 2 Kings chapter 17 verse 22. Uh-huh. For the children of Israel walked in all the sins of Jeroboam, read. which he did. They departed not from them uh-huh. until the Lord removed Israel out of his sight, uh-huh. as he had said by all his servants, the prophets. So was Israel carried away out of their own land to Assyria unto this day. Unto Assyria. So all of the northern kingdom of Israel were eventually taken out. Like I said, it happened in waves over a, a lot of years. It didn't just, you don't just read the scripture and it just happened like that. Right, right. <laughs> this, this is taking place. It's a lot. So from there. Go to uh, 2 Kings 18 and verse 13. This is something that's not brought up. No, I'm sorry. Finish verse 24 on that. Sir. 2 Kings 17 and verse 24. Verse 24. Uh-huh. And the king of Assyria brought men from Babylon uh-huh. and from Kathar uh-huh. and from Avad uh-huh. and from Hamad uh-huh. and from Sephravim Sephra- uh-huh. Sephra- and, re- and placed them in the cities of of Samaria Read. instead of the children of Israel. Read. And they possessed Samaria and dwelt in the cities thereof. So they were taken out of the land and they did what? They put other men in that land. All right. So from there, let's go to 2 Kings chapter 18 and verse 13. I'm going to show you something. Something that's not um, put a lot of credit into is that Assyria actually came up against the southern kingdom as well. But we're going to show you what happened. Read that. The book of 2 Kings, chapter 18, verse 13. Uh-huh. Now in the 14th year of King Hezekiah, uh-huh. did Sennacherib, the king of Assyria, come up against all the fenced cities of Judah uh-huh. and took them. So he came up and he took all the fenced cities of Judah. Judah thought they were about to fall as well, especially after when you read about the siege of Lachish. All right. They were about to enter into the land of Jerusalem. So Assyria was the world power this time. But we're going to show you what happened. The Most High said it's not going to go down like that. Go to Isaiah chapter 37 and verse 1. So what are we learning right now? We're learning about our history, how we went into Assyria. Why did it happen? Who were the prominent uh, kings during this time period? Read that. Isaiah chapter 37, verse 1. Uh-huh. And it came to pass, when King Hezekiah heard it, mm-hmm. that he rent his clothes and covered himself with sackcloth. Read. And went into the house of the Lord. And he sent Eliakim, who was over the household, and Shebna the scribe, and the elders of the priests covered with sackcloth. Read. Unto Isaiah the Un- prophet. Unto who? Unto Isaiah the prophet. So now you get the time period. Isaiah was during this time period as well. Jump down to verse 33. What did Isaiah tell Hezekiah? Verse 33. Verse 33. 
Therefore, thus saith the Lord concerning the king of Assyria. Uh-huh. He shall not come into the city, Read. nor shoot an arrow there, uh-huh. nor come before it with shields, uh-huh. nor cast a bank against it. So Isaiah told Hezekiah, you don't have to worry. Assyria may be the power on the earth right now, but guess what? They are not going to take Jerusalem. Not yet. Go to 2 Kings chapter 19. And we're going to read verse 32 down to 36. All right. So this is the last scripture. And we're going to we're going to close out on the Assyrian captivity. Read that. Second Kings 19 verse 32. Uh-huh. Therefore, it does said the Lord concerning the king of Assyria. Uh-huh. He shall not come into the city. Read. Nor shoot an arrow there. Nor come before it with shield. Nor cast a bank against it. Read. By the way that he came. By the by the same shall he return. Uh-huh. And shall not come into the city, said the Lord. Read. For I will defend the city to save it. For mine own sake uh-huh. and for my servant David's so sake. So the Most High God said he's going to defend Jerusalem himself. Read. And it came to pass that night that the angel of the Lord went out and smote in the camp of the Assyrians an hundred, fourscore and five thousand. Mm-hmm. And when they arose early in the morning, behold, they were all dead corpses. So the Most High sent an angel amongst all the Assyrians and he killed them. Read. So Sennacherib, king of, Assyri- of Assyria, Departed and went and returned and dwelt at Nineveh. He went and returned and dwelt at Nineveh. Keep that in mind because when we go into Babylon, we're going to show you something very important happened at Nineveh. Now let's get the last king over Assyria. Go to Isaiah chapter 20 and verse 1. Show you the last king of Assyria and then we will close and we'll pick up next time in Babylon. Isaiah chapter 20 and verse 1. Isaiah 20 and verse 1. Uh-huh. In that year that Tartan came unto Ashdod when Sargon the king of Assyria when, who? when Sargon the king of Assyria sent him and fought against Ashdod and took it so Sargon was the last king of Assyria so we pray that you got some a little edification out of this and like I said we will continue next in Babylon with that we say shalom shalom we used to scream black power while Haram was pushed but at the end of the day Nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road. Purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana. Sierra Leone, 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.